as the Red Terran, we have got Gumiho from Team FFL. Both of these guys, respectively in Code A, um, but this, I mean, both of them, they're, both of these guys have actually played, um, interestingly, in every single Korean qualifier to date. This is, of course, the fourth Korean qualifier, and they haven't actually had that much success, because in order to actually qualify, you either need to, you know, win it, or you need to be getting in the top six, basically, of the point system uh, for the Korean qualifiers. Both of these guys actually at the bottom because they haven't done rather well in any of the tournaments so far. So this is absolutely their best chance uh, to, to win it, to grab really good points, to push them forward to direct qualification uh, for the next TSL upcoming. Yeah, and I mean, when you consider who is in the Korean qualifier and the type of brackets that these guys are actually up against, I mean, it could look like any sort of major competition bracket. And that is what has been absolutely insane to me throughout the qualifier. Like, it's just absolutely shocking to see the names. And, of course, you can go to TeamLiquid.net, and at the very top of the page, there is a bracket. But, you know, if I was to just throw out a few, uh, of course, we've got the two players that are here. Uh, Losira played today. Hart played today, Min played today, um, Polt played today, Revival, Inori, um, Lucky played. I mean, this is just like a few names that I'm throwing out here, Apollo. And we should note here, we do have a barracks down on the low ground, even beyond the low ground here of the natural. So far, it does not look like uh, our opponent, Shine, has seen it. So uh, we'll see exactly if anything's going to happen by that. But his opponent did go... Hatch first into, and uh, then into pool. And what do you think? Stacked brackets? Yeah, incredibly stacked brackets. The top eight for today, incredible. Of course, we have this game now, Gummiho vs. Shine. Then Teja versus Final. Uh, and then Maru Genius, Hero Koka. It's absolutely an amazing lineup. But uh, yeah, we do have this proxy barracks outside. It's nothing intense, of course. It's just a no. single barracks. It wasn't late. I mean, it wasn't early, sorry, or anything. And of course, it can be very easily lifted up and put back. And with the Marine actually scouting or going back for the drone here, uh, should I say, is that Shine already knows there's nothing to be afraid of whatsoever. Because if the Marine was there, why isn't it at his base, of course? Right, right. And uh, the other thing that I've actually seen sometimes on these low ground racks is the ability to snipe this Overlord that's over on the far east side. Uh, if the you know Marine can get that early kill, that's always a, a big plus. But it looks like Shine saves the drone with an extractor grab. And uh, we do have the SCV going in for the scout now on Shine's base. Sees the no gas. Uh, we'll expect the Queens to start popping out here uh, from the hatcheries and probably uh, at least a pair of Zerglings, and there it is, already chasing uh, that SCV out of there. And Gummiho's actually look at that smartly placed the command center on the natural, a third command center, because he knows inside the main base, Shine will be looking for that command center if it's alive, and that's why it's actually popped out of the extractor. It does fall down, and now that third command center has actually been hidden. It's hidden information uh, currently so far, and actually a really good start here for Gummiho. Of course, not revealing something so crucial that could change the complete state of the game. Yeah, I'll be excited to see if we can uh, see Shine actually go in for it. Uh, one chance, of course, these two Zerglings uh, not going to do much against the Marines that are sitting on the front of the ramp. Uh, so it might be, well, I mean, sacking an Overlord at the natural isn't normally something that a Zerg is going to do, you know, potentially into the main to try to get some read there. But I think he'll have that well hidden for uh, at least a little while. The gases are up now, Apollo, and we should have speed started here shortly. Uh, aside from that, we don't have anything like a third hatch. In fact, we don't even, we had a third queen, but it looks mm. like he's going to stop from there and just continue to th uh, to drone up a little bit. Look at this. It's actually the gas that Gummiho uh, invested in so early. It's actually going straight to double engineering base. That's incredibly greedy play, considering he went third command center first and then straight yeah. to double upgrades. And right now, Shine has an option. Yeah, I was going to say the throw down a roach one. He got double upgrade, uh, double gasp relatively early. And I think he actually will go into a roach bailing bus from here. And with such early upgrades, I don't think Gummy Ho can hold this is really really difficult he is going for a factory now but his tanks will never be out in time for something aggressive coming out from shine no they won't and uh, aside from the rare wall that we're seeing come up here uh, what can he possibly you know hold with we do have the factory coming up right now but uh, even the amount of Marines that he has out right now is just is just measly compared to what could be sent out. Now, Gumiho does note that there is not uh, there is not a third gone down yet. It comes out here will be met by a couple of queens. Won't see any units at all. And although we 
don't do we have a baneling nest yet it's just not just yet like a but it, it might go down i mean it still can go down any second now actually as he has the money for it but if he doesn't he can all oh, that it is actually going on the natural so it has come down it's a relatively fast structure to make and he can easily you know get the lings over there and then sure. morph as the baneling nest completes but yeah like you said gummy hole very smartly scouted the third base saw no third base so now there's two options it's either two base tech or an all in that's two options that gummy hole has lined up but it really is are Protoss players two base teching, especially when they don't take gas early? No, not really. So he's playing the odds, he's playing probability wars, and he's actually thrown down a second bunker, which may help him out. Well, well he salvaged there's... the front one. All right, well, Barracks Wall oh. is just as good, I suppose. Wow, I thought he was actually going to continue to stack the defenses, but he decides to put up another Rax instead. Uh, that Zergling actually gets some good information, sees that there's only the one bunker there. He's also going to throw down a Supply Depot. He goes ahead and lifts that Orbital and uh, gets that ready to put down, but the inevitable is coming. We have a ton of Banelings in production right now, 13 uh, about ready to move forward, and he's going to try to snipe that Rax before it gets done. Another bunker is going up. Uh, the Repair is only getting hit by one or two of those SCVs on that forward bunker, and the Bailings are going to come in from behind. Apollos could be a very clean break here for Shine. He goes in and gets the bunker right away. SCVs and Marines will fall, and units pour inside the natural of Gumiho. Yeah, this is it. This Shine's got this game. Gumiho way, way too greedy. The first tank pops out 9.30, a couple minutes later than it actually should have been here. And uh, if Bailings get up there, the depots will fall, and there they do fall down. And now Hell is unleashed, and Shine is in a great position. Yeah, he's going to move forward. He's going to take a few losses here, but with his reinforcements of 20 links, he should have it. And there it is, GG. And